When the patient attends the nuclear medicine department for a myocardial perfusion stress heart study, they are greeted by the nuclear medicine practitioner, who may be a radiographer, a nuclear medicine technologist, or a nurse. The practitioner takes the patient into the nuclear medicine clinical area. This is a radiation supervised area because radioactive sources are used and so entry is limited to staff, patients and essential accompanying people. The practitioner measures the patient's height and weight so that she can calculate the correct amount of radiopharmaceutical to use. They then go to the stress room. Here the practitioner checks the patient's identity to make sure that she has the correct details. She asks the patient about his symptoms and checks that he has remembered any instructions about not drinking tea or coffee before the study. Then she explains what will be happening during the procedure and answers any questions that he might have. The practitioner places some adhesive electrode pads onto the patient's chest. These will be used to connect the ECG machine which will monitor the patient's heartbeat. There are 12 wires to connect the electrodes to the ECG machine. The ECG shows the patient's heart rate and tells the practitioner whether it is beating normally. An inflatable cuff placed around the patient's arm is connected to a blood pressure monitor. This will show any abnormal change in blood pressure during the procedure. Then the practitioner inserts a needle into a suitable arm vein. This will make it easy to give injections later. If the patient is capable, they can sit on an exercise bicycle and begin pedalling. This exercise will increase their heart rate. The resistance of the bicycle is gradually stepped up so that the patient has to pedal harder, which increases their heart rate further. The practitioner checks whether the patient is experiencing any symptoms and encourages them to keep going. She monitors the patient's heart using the ECG machine and keeps an eye on their blood pressure. When the patient has exercised to near their limit, the practitioner injects a radioactive chemical called a radiopharmaceutical through the needle that was previously placed in their arm. As soon as it is injected, the radiopharmaceutical goes to the heart muscle to reflect the myocardial blood flow at this moment of maximum stress. The patient must continue to exercise for a further two minutes and then they can relax. Alternatively, if the patient is not able to pedal on the bicycle, they can simply sit in the chair whilst a drug is infused through the needle in their arm. This is known as pharmacological stress. Several different drugs may be used, but they all make the heart beat faster or harder or increase myocardial blood flow to simulate the effect of exercise. The radiopharmaceutical is kept in a lead-lined box and the syringe is shielded with lead to protect the practitioner's fingers from the radiation. When the maximum heart rate has been reached, the radiopharmaceutical is injected through the same needle. Then the stressing is continued for a further two minutes. The stress injection part of the procedure is now finished. Most of the ECG electrodes are removed, but three electrodes are left for use later on. The needle can now be removed from the patient's arm. The practitioner checks that they have fully recovered and are feeling okay. Then the patient goes to a waiting room that is reserved for radioactive patients. They will have to wait here for about one hour before the images of their heart can be taken. During this waiting time, they can have a drink of tea or coffee if they wish.
This patient is having a myocardial perfusion imaging scan. About one hour ago, he was given an injection of a radioactive chemical, known as a radiopharmaceutical, which will have concentrated in his heart muscle. So now, a practitioner takes him into the gamma camera room, where pictures of his heart will be taken. The practitioner checks the patient's identification to make sure that she has the correct person. Then she explains what will happen during the scan. This is the gamma camera that will take the pictures of the radiopharmaceutical in the patient's heart. The patient lies on the imaging couch and the practitioner attaches three ECG leads to the electrodes that are already stuck to the patient's chest. This will allow the gamma camera to take pictures at different times during each heartbeat. The patient raises his arms above his head so that they will keep out of the way of the gamma camera. Knee supports and Velcro bands help to keep the patient in a comfortable position. The imaging couch moves towards the gamma camera until the patient's heart is positioned in front of the two detectors. The patient's head stays outside the detectors but they must move close to the patient's chest in order to get good pictures of his heart. The detectors will come close to the patient, but there are sensors to prevent them from actually touching. The gamma camera takes a pair of pictures with its two detectors, and then moves a bit and takes another pair of pictures. This is known as SPECT, which stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. This series of pictures will allow a computer to reconstruct cross-sectional images through the heart, showing blood flow to the heart muscle the myocardium. During this time, the practitioner will be watching from close by, even though the patient may not be able to see them. After about 20 minutes, the gamma camera detectors will have taken their last pair of pictures then they move away from the patient. It is now common practice to take some further images using a low-dose x-ray CT scanner attached to the gamma camera. For this, the imaging couch has to move further into the gantry. During this part of the test, the practitioner will have to go into the control room for a few minutes whilst the x-rays are on, but she can still watch the patient through a lead glass window. The data from this low-dose CT scan will be used to apply corrections to the gamma camera images which improve the accuracy of the test. After the test is finished, the patient is free to leave the department.